Hello everyone, another quick update. Um, now, you may have had a message from Richard D. Hall if you're on his list about the trial transcript becoming available. This happened about a week ago, I think it was. So I downloaded the transcript and I've read through some of it, well, on my ebook reader. And, um, you know, it, it, it's clear that uh, Martin Hibbert and his co-claimant, Sarah Gilbard, I think the name is, they can't really um, support the story. And I think what's revealed in the transcript quite clearly is that Mr. Hibbert claims that he doesn't want his daughter to be scrutinised by the public, you know, because of Richard's approach via um, attempted video camera, etc., uh, which was done on a public road and all of that. And that's mentioned in this discussion. But Hibbert has published this book in April where he goes into quite some detail about uh, what happened to him or what allegedly happened to him at the Manchester Arena. But in the, in the in it, when he gives evidence, he doesn't really present any, any real evidence that he was there. He doesn't seem to have any conviction about being there. Um, he just says, oh, you know, what Richard is doing is wrong. But when he's asked uh, what specifically is wrong or when, you know, what he specifically wants, does he want Richard's website to be blocked? And he basically says no. You know, so he gives a very confused picture. Um, and I haven't read through all of it. I haven't got to Richard's part yet, but the that's sort of immaterial, really, because the judgment is due tomorrow on the 23rd of October. Richard originally sent a message saying it was going to be handed down in the in the High Court, but apparently now they're going to send it by email. So uh, tomorrow will be the big day, really. And uh, I have to say that the, based on past experience, I'm not optimistic, despite their case really being pulled apart and... Uh, the witness is not being really very strong in making their case of harassment. It's really an almost non-existent case, to be fair, um, when you actually go through all of this and consider what Hibbert has done since the Panorama documentary and stuff. I having this book serialised in the Daily Mail, which I didn't know about that either. Some of you may have followed this more closely than I have, because I just find it a bit depressing to follow. So it's really just to say the trial transcript is available should you wish to read it. Um, you know, it, it's, it's comical and I, I obviously we'll have the judgment tomorrow. So but I'm not optimistic, despite the the, the lack of evidence from the claimants to, to really make their claim at any you know, valid claim. I think Hibbert does enough whinging in the uh, trial that they may just selectively focus on that and claim that that amounts to evidence of harassment. I, that's my gut feeling, but I hope I'm wrong. And uh you know, that justice is, is, is properly served, but we'll see. So I'm going to move on from that now, and um, I want to just reference what uh, a chap called Conrado Salascano sent me, uh, which is quite interesting. Uh, I've known Conrado for many years now, and he's all, all into all the same sort of things that I have. He has a master's in um, uh, physics, and he did his master's on cold fusion. Uh, and he sent me this, and I originally... You know, some of the stuff that Conrado's sent me, I've been a bit sceptical about, and I was a bit sceptical about this, because it kind of looks a bit, uh, you know, I don't know, it just looks strange and, and made up. But actually, it's not. This document has been sent to Major Chiefs Association, which is, if you look at this um, organisation here, and I check this out, you can look at the website. These are site like... Uh, police um, leaders in Canada and the US and it's some t type of um, organized well it says we'll read where it says major cities chiefs association is a professional organization of police executives representing the largest cities in the United States and, and Canada the MCCA provides a unique forum for urban chiefs sheriffs and other law enforcement executives to share ideas experiences and strategies MCCA provides a collaborative forum etc and they've sent this document about unidentified anomalous phenomena and how these should be dealt with by law enforcement and stuff. Law enforcement considerations section two. The potentially ubiquitous presence of UAP defines the national security implications and drives a broad range of stakeholders and demand for rigorous scientific understanding of intel and intelligence on phenomena. So, you know, oh, and there's, you can see these, these AI images, which is it's replete with 
Um, and they've even got the Roswell thing that I haven't really read all of this because it's just part of an ongoing psychological operation, really. And you can, it's only 11 pages long, so of course, there's not that much information in it. And half of that is probably gr fancy graphics. And then it talks about UFA reports, UAP reporting mechanisms, they're avoiding the UFO term, except for example, here they can't rename New, rename New Fork. Uh, and these organizations have been around for a long time. This is probably new, this aviation safety reporting system and um, all of this. And uh, the, the, if you read this, you know, reading between the lines kind of thing, it's talking about risk to national security, of course, as we would expect. And of course, it's mainly written by largely ignorant people who've just got their news from the mainstream and don't really realize that a lot of these stories have been available uh, for study for decades you know so um, really they should be uh, looking more into that and obviously then you get into the connection to things like 9-11 but you can have a look at this uh, and Conrado also mentioned this video that I, I didn't really get a lot out of but I'll include it here because there's some, some strange sightings going on so maybe they are ramping up let's just suppose they are using this hologram technology or something Project Bluebeam, whatever you want to call it, um, or just making AI videos and putting them out into the mix as real. You know, they could be doing that as well. I don't think they necessarily have to use Bluebeam. They can do a fair bit with, you know, just AI generated videos that they can, you know, put out through people and tell a story. Um, so again, just be alert for this nonsense. We, we're living in clown world and the clown world is going to uh, have aliens and stuff brought into it perhaps you know at this point as we've been saying for at least uh, 10 years now so we'll see this where this narrative goes and on that sort of subject um dominic sent me this latest interview with greer um which i listened through to on sort of one and a half speed just to see what he said he's basically saying the same things as he was 20 years ago he doesn't mention 9 11 doesn't really mention any of the newer developments that much well to be fair you know he does he does say that they're trying to use this as a threat scenario and other risks to national security but he doesn't go into a lot of detail really and he just he's just got the same old story going he does criticize people like Lou Elizondo but again he's been doing that for a few years now so he's you know he's trying to sort of set up a fake food fight because he's previously admitted that uh, he works for the CIA and for those that have not sort of come across this before uh, and my, you know, research on Greer and my conclusions about him, please do read my book, Acknowledged, that I'll include a link in the description. And it's chapter 23 in this book, uh, which is about Steve Greer. And I've got 17 pages on him there with lots of links and stuff. So please have a look at that if you are, you know, you want to know more about Greer and what his role appears to be. Certainly he's responsible for waking people like me up to the, the cover up and aspects about the UFO ET thing which I didn't know that's how I got going and all of this so in one sense you know I, I owe a debt to him for that um, and you know you can make the same sort of argument about uh, Richard Gage uh, and architects and engineers they have woken up some people to the falsity of the official narrative but then of course they've really tried to keep them in that you know lower level so to speak and avoid them going down the rabbit hole um, so, you know, you can you can have a look at that and study that and see what you make of it. Uh, and then finally, just for this short update, uh, I'm, I'm now flip flopping again on the MH370. And this is really all uh, Matthew MES's fault. <laughs> um, and um, Matthew Estefu, who runs the um, uh, Math Easy Solutions, he's done many, many videos on 9-11. He's been quite prolific in his output, actually. Um, but he alerted me to certain things about Ashton Forbes that I wasn't fully aware of, you know, and I, he, he's, he has mentioned things before. But I mean, like the, the key one, and I've included this on the on the last update page now um, that I did. So I did an update a few weeks ago and I've added what MES sent me, what Matthew sent me to that page at the bottom. And so basically they um, posted on his uh, Twitter you know that they they he needs to take a look at 9/11 and all of that research, and and look at the uh, work of Mark Conlon and so forth in terms of fake planes and stuff, and 
he just blew them out and said, 9-11 uh, conspiracies require a lot of convoluted logic and conjecture. I watched the towers collapse in real time on TV. I watched people jump to their deaths. I'm not interested in conspiracy stuff around it all, at all, he says. So he's not really willing to look it, into the links to some of the stuff he's claiming. Uh, you know, for example, that Bob Green has talked about whether, you know, and he's basing it all on the videos. And MES makes a further case that the videos are actually fake. You know, I flip-flopped on this, but... Uh, he, he has provided more links, um, so you can look at that. So Ashton Forbes does seem to be some sort of mouthpiece for some group, uh, maybe to cover up, you know, what's happened with MH370 again and put another false narrative out there. Maybe some of what Ashton Forbes says is partly true. Maybe, you know, as I've said before, uh, what happened to the plane? It was, you know, transferred somehow with some advanced technology, some teleportation technology. But the videos that he's claiming are real are actually fake. You know, it's so uh, we will have to we we'll have to keep following this and um, see where it goes. I suppose. Uh, so I've included the message there. So that's basically uh, it for now. Really, I'll just keep this fairly short. And uh, for those that watch this today on the 22nd. Please uh, uh, let's uh, keep our prayers going for Richard and for the justice system, really, because this is a massive test of the UK justice system. We know how hard they want to get this online harms bill through uh, and so forth. And there's one going through in Australia, I think, as well. So, uh, yeah, it's a big concern, a big concern. So thanks very much for your support and your, for listening. And uh, do, do take care and I'll see you again in the next video.